Greetings, this is Jim from Oily Dog Racing, uh, making a short video this evening regarding uh, three scale extrix cars that I just purchased. We've got uh, Mario Andretti's uh, 1978 Champ car, we've got a, a Ford Anglia, and uh, the mighty Checker Cab. You rarely see these three on the track at once, but... <laughs> It's all in our imaginations. So, let me first start off with uh, with Mario's car. Um, the packaging on this is really nice. Um, you get the special, uh, you know, the, wor the world champ, uh, the header card. Um, it's a beautiful car. They, uh, I know, I've been harsh on 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 this brand recently with with reason, but this is a really nice car and. Um, it's got, um, let me get a tech block here. Sorry, folks. I'm still working with my camera phone, so bear with me. And you know what? Look at this. Yep, there's another one of the oily dogs. He must want something. Okay, come on now. Oh, wow, the guide flag. Look how far back the guide flag is. That's incredible. Um, so maybe I... She's going to overhang the tech block a bit. I'm going to get a little bit of light here. Um, okay, so uh, finish on this is really nice. The, the wheel, the wheels are sharp. Uh, the printing is nice. Um, the, the detail is nice. Uh, it, it's a, it's a good looking car. Um, my only complaint with all three of these cars and a few that I've had lately. Well, I've got a couple complaints, but the only ones on these is they're covered in fingerprints when I buy them. Uh, so when they're putting them together at the factory, you know, who knows if they just had a hamburger and then decided to go back to work and putting cars on. But, you know, there's greasy smudge prints all over, uh, you know, insides and outsides. And it wipes off with a microfiber cloth. But, you know, still, that's, that's presentation. That's showing your product to uh, your consumer and... and yeah, I surely wouldn't want that. But uh, this is a this is a real peach of a car. Don't know how it handles. Uh, we'll find out. But uh, back to the undercarriage. Um, we've got that guide flag set pretty far back. They probably did that for you know for clearance and to make it look realistic. Uh, big magnet in there that will be coming out for uh, my use. Um, and it appears to be uh, a slim line. Oh, I'm going out of focus. Bear with me. Uh, a slimline motor, um, which I could see for a car being of this this size. the The rear end is um, uh, very accessible. Um, you can really see what's going on there. Typical, typical plastic bushings and a plastic uh, crown gear. Um, but that'll. That'll be easy to remove and, and put a set of urethanes on there and true them up once these rubber tires have seen their better days. So that's uh, that's Mario's car and um, really nice. Okay. Oh, gosh. I just want to say Hermione wouldn't be caught dead in this one. But um, this is a beauty. Uh, again, covered in fingerprints. I, I wiped her off. But this is a Ford Anglia. And um, I tell you what, I cannot wait for them to come out with more of these in different liveries. Um, this is going to be a blast. This has got some great detail. I believe this one is working headlights and taillights as well. Um, really nice. This would be great racing along with the uh, with the Austin Minis. Um, I, I wish Scalectrix would come out with more of their Beetles too. Uh, that would also be a good companion car to this. It sure wouldn't do well against Mario's car, uh, Mario's car, pardon me, in, in real life, but uh, <laughs> you could put them on the track. But, uh, yeah, this is a nice one. Good finish, too. Um, nice paint, nice printing. Very unique, uh, you know, bespoke undercarriage. Um, you can see her there. Uh, the motor comes slightly downward at an angle. You can see that that uh, that wedge there. 
Um, and it's got a, a button magnet instead of a bar magnet, which is uh, very interesting. I'll be pulling that out anyways. Uh, but that's a, that's a really pretty car. Um, I'm glad uh, glad I bought this one. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if my history serves me correct, the checker cab, the original checker, the real checker cabs were, were designed by a Russian immigrant um, bulletproof vehicle. I tell you, I remember when I was a kid, these were these were common. These were running all over the place, and I also remember. Sometime in the late 70s or very early 80s, the cabs that had, uh, you know, outlived their use, uh, they were, you know, switching over to newer models, they were repainting them, putting vinyl Landau tops on uh, in the back here. They were putting, uh, they were blocking this area off and putting little porthole windows on it, and they were selling them to the general public. I thought they were pretty neat. Uh, very spacious inside, too. Um, I uh, used to restore cars back in my youth, and I had a 58 Chevy that, I tell you what, anybody who knows cars, if that's not a 58 Chevy front end, uh, with some slight variations, I don't, I don't know what is. But this is a, uh, a representation of a, a New York City cab. Um, great detail, great printing. Um, what do we have here? A little, little smudge of some sorts. We'll have to figure out what that is. But, uh, um, I don't... This one sure looks like it's got headlights and taillights. Um, do not tailgate. It's, it's got the taxi, uh, um, I don't know what they call this thing. Board. Um, inside. Inside details pretty nice. There's a there's a jump seat. There's a back seat and there's a jump seat here and on the other side on the real one. And I think um, there might be on this one too, but my camera won't pick it up. It looks like there's a meter. Yeah, there's a meter there on the uh, on the dash. Um, again, bespoke uh, chassis for this one. Bar magnet, uh, sidewinder. Uh, looks like it's got a standard uh, size motor in it. Uh, I bought two of these because, um, uh, well, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to create a when the guys come over and, and the family too. We we race downstairs. We race um, you know, all sorts of nineteen uh, like 1978 and back vintage cars because when I vintage raced, I, I raced in a vintage class. I like the older cars. They just, there's something about them. Uh, so what we're going to do with um, these checker cabs is I'm going to set up kind of a game where we're going to race on Suzuka, but at some point after a certain amount of laps, uh, you got to throw a six-sided die, and there'll be a chart that'll tell you uh, what you need to do at that point. So, you know, for instance, uh, you, know, you, you, do, you do your laps, uh, you throw your die, and you find out, oh, i got to go pick up, you know, a figure over by the hairpin. You know, and you, you, you stop by the hairpin, and you pretend you load your figures, and then you take them to, you know, whatever the next stop would be on that, you know, die cast. And uh, I think it's going to be a ball, um, <laughs> kind of like racing to the airport kind of thing, but... Um, when I perfect that system, I might make a video. Uh, it's just for fun, you know. So, that's the checker cab. Now, I've showed you this one before. This is the, um, the Mark I Jaguar. Uh, I bought a couple extra because I'm going to strip these down and paint them in different liveries. I'm going to do one in all, all British green with uh, green spoke wheels and the other one I'll be doing in, in maroon with uh, the maroon spoke wheels to, to represent actual historic racers. Um, the one problem, well, a couple problems I had with this one uh, on my other car, the, the tire uh, clearance, actually the tire rubbed on the, on the wheel well on the top, just on the inside. Um, let's see, if it's not this one. You can see there's a little bit of gap. Oh, she's rotating. Sorry, I'm doing this with my phone. There's a little bit of gap between the wheel and the tire on this car, but on, um, here we go, on this particular one, 
you can see the tire is actually going to rub on the inner wheel well. And you can't really, uh, and these wheels have, are spaced out too, and I don't want to try to push them in any further. So what I did is I had to chamfer. I took my, uh, my, my little rotary tool and I beveled, I chamfered, I beveled this edge on the inside. So it didn't affect the outside, but I cut it on the inside to, to make clearance. So I did that. Um, then it worked out fine. Uh, but here's another quality issue. Uh, you've got a, a beautiful, beautiful front end. Um, I don't know what this this decorative rope um, is called, but you see it's not it's not quite square on this one. And and this one's this one. Let me get, move the light over here. This one is even um, even more. Uh, cocked off to one side than the other. You know, uh, am I nitpicking? And for $65, you're damn right I am. I will say this, though. This car has got the brightest headlights I have ever seen on a slot car. This is a, uh absolute joy to, you know, turn the lights off and do some night racing with because the headlights almost throw a beam that I would consider, you know, a scale realistic beam, um, pretty sharp. But those are the cars um, that we got in the mail this week. We got uh, Mario Andretti's uh, uh, Champ car, uh, Lotus seventy nine. We've got the uh, the Ford Anglia and uh, the mighty Checker Cab. So uh, I, I haven't given up on Skillextrix. Um, you know, I, I love their cars. I, I I just want them to to focus on quality and to and to do it right. But um, anyway, those are the cars. Uh, I hope everyone has a pleasant day or evening or whenever you watch this video. And uh, again, thanks from Oily Dog Racing. Bye bye.